So what is the purpose of our stomach? We all know about our stomach, but we don't actually know exactly what it does. So that's what we're going to be, be talking about in this video. Now for the diet, I'll use this diagram because I think it's really, really good to explain and visualize everything that happens. Um, but before I get to this diagram, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page um, in the process of digestion. So whatever food, say you think of your favorite food, whatever food you want to eat, you got to know that it is made up of three big important things. It's made up of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, or lipids, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, even bread. So even if your favorite food is bread, most people will tell you, oh, bread is a carbohydrate. What that means is that bread is mostly carbohydrate. It also has proteins and it also has fats. So just bear in mind, whatever food you, you eat is made up of these three things in different ratios, okay? Now, when you uh, put this food in your mouth, it is broken down into smaller pieces and then even smaller pieces until eventually your teeth can't break it down any further. And so you need something else. And this something else is your salivary gland. It will, it will release enzymes into your mouth that will break down your food, specifically your carbohydrate aspect of your food. So remember, you have these three main aspects. It will break down the carbohydrate aspect of your food into maltose. It will not touch the proteins. It will not touch the lipids, okay? So let's check this. So it will not touch the lipids. It will not touch the proteins. It will only touch, it will only affect or break down the carbohydrates. But at the same time, it does not completely break it down all the way. It breaks it down halfway. So remember, the final molecule that we want from our carbohydrates is glucose. Okay, so right now we only broke down our carbohydrates into maltose. Then we need to break it further into glucose. So technically, we have started breaking it down, but not completely finished. That's why I'm putting a cross and a tick. But these we haven't touched yet. Now, so when we've reached this, this stage, we're finished with the mouth. Then, once we're finished with the mouth, the food will get moved down the esophagus by peristalsis and reach the stomach. That's what we're talking about now. Now, the stomach um, is, um, is muscular, so it has muscles just like the esophagus. Now, these muscles will not have the purpose like the esophagus to move the food down further. It will rather have the purpose of mixing Okay, so when these muscles contract, it will mix the food. Now, you might ask yourself, what the heck is the purpose in mixing? So the purpose in mixing, you can kind of think to yourself, is to make sure that these foods get equally exposed to the liquids that it needs to get, get exposed to. Because by, by the muscle when it's contracting, all the foods is now exposed equally to the liquids. It's mixing around, making sure everything is um, touching all the liquids it needs to. You can think about it like when you make cereal in the morning, you put the cereal into the bowl and then you add milk but then you have to mix right because otherwise all the some of the cereal pieces are really dry and don't have any milk on it so that's the same thing here your stomach is making sure that the food isn't dry and each one is exposed to some um, liquids to be digested now specifically what is digested in your stomach so remember we have not touched yet the proteins but now we are now we are going to touch the proteins we're going to start breaking down the proteins that's what's going to happen in your stomach. And after everything is broken down and after everything is mixed and everything happened, that I'll explain soon, what happens is it turns into something, a brown liquid called chyme. So it looks kind of like poop, but it's not poop because there's still some valuable things in there that your body needs to absorb first. So it looks like that and your chyme will leave the stomach and enter your small intestine later. But we'll talk about that later, so don't worry about that. So let's now actually talk about what happens in here in detail. So this is your esophagus. So the esophagus comes down and eventually reaches your stomach. So this is your food. And your stomach has this membrane around, okay, the stomach wall. I made this diagram so that it's clear to see, otherwise it'd be really tiny. So just know that this is not, not anything different. It's just the wall of your stomach. And you got to imagine that it's actually going all the way around. But I didn't want to make it go all the way around because otherwise it looked really crowded. So I put it only on this edge, but know that it also goes around the entire stomach. And you can see this uh, stomach wall has um, some things on it. What are these things? So these are, are glands. These are gastric glands. So gastric means stomach. So these are stomach glands. And what they do is they release different things into the stomach. This yellow one will release hydrochloric acid. Okay, so it's going to release these things. Okay, but we'll talk about when, when it's released later. 
Now, this blue one is going to release pepsin. Pepsin is an enzyme, and remember from before, in my first uh, part one video, enzymes break things down. They speed up reactions. And that's really useful here, because pepsin is going to do exactly that. But remember, enzymes specifically work uh, only on one specific thing. So for example, pepsin is only destined, its only purpose in life is to break down protein. It's not going to break down fats, it's not going to break down carbohydrates, it's only made for protein. So remember, enzymes always serve one purpose in life. Uh, and this is the enzyme. This is how it looks like. This is pepsin. So let's actually see now the details. So when the food comes down, once you've swallowed your food and it's in the esophagus, your brain will tell your stomach to get the hell ready. For example, um, it will tell this gland, bro, okay, he just ate some, um, your person just ate some food and it's about to reach the stomach. Make sure you release some pepsin so we can break down his proteins. So that's exactly what he does. This this gland will start releasing pepsin. So I'm just I'm only going to do it um, for these two because down here, uh, otherwise it's going to take too long. So just imagine the same thing happens for these two. Um, so this gland releases now pepsin. But the problem is this pepsin is asleep. So the, the, this, this, like, this random mark that I'm putting over is just to indicate that it's not functioning. It's inactive. So when your stomach releases this, this pepsin, it's inactive. It's just like a human. For example, if a human is asleep, it's not going to do anything. It's useless. But when we're awake, we're able to do things. So that's the same thing here. So this gland is releasing an inactive peps a pepsin, an asleep, a pepsin that is asleep. So that means when the food comes, it won't be able to interact with it. It won't be able to break it down because it's asleep. So you're, you, you need to wake it up. How do we wake it up? So we wake it up by this one, this yellow gland. This yellow gland will release some hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid um, is gonna what this what this hydrochloric acid is gonna do is it is gonna move towards this asleep pepsin and wake it up. It's gonna be like, bro, you gotta wake up. You gotta do your job, man. So he's gonna wake it up, and as soon as the, uh, this hydrochloric acid activates or wakes up this pepsin now the pepsin is able to go and do its job so now when the food comes it can go towards the food and interact with all the proteins and break the proteins down remember it's not going to touch the lipids or the carbohydrates it's only going to interact with the proteins now first before we move on i just want to um, make sure you understand this why the heck is pepsin inactivated in the first place? Why is it asleep in the first place? So the reason why it's asleep in the first place is actually really smart of your body. If this pepsin was released exactly, if this if this pepsin was released activated, what it would do immediately is go break down your your own glands. It will break down your own proteins because remember, pepsin breaks down proteins. But your stomach wall is also made up of proteins. So if it was released active then it would just go and eat your, eat your own stomach. And that's really bad. So your body is actually really smart and releases it inactive to make sure that when it moves around, it can't eat your own stomach proteins, but rather just floats around. So that's actually really smart. And it will only get activated once HCL is released when the food is ready to come down. So the HCL, the hydrochloric acid, won't be released until your food is in the stomach. So that way, this pepsin can't be activated and digest your stomach. But when the food comes and the, and the hydrochloric acid activates your pepsin, then your pepsin is activated, yes, but it won't eat your stomach, it will actually eat the food. So that's, that's how your stomach is actually quite smart. That's the purpose of having this inactive form. It's really important. Okay. Now, the mechanism. So you need to know the mechanism for the IB, how, to, how this reaction happens between pepsin and and the proteins. So here I got a small diagram and then we'll come back to this image. So again, I think you saw this in part one, I had the same setup. So the source, what is the source of this enzyme? The source of this enzyme is the gastric gland, specifically the one that releases pepsin. So you just got to know the source is gastric glands. And what is released? Pepsin. You saw it up here, this is pepsin. 
This is an enzyme. It's going to break something down. It's going to react to something. Now, what's the substrate? Remember, the substrate is the molecule that is going to be broken down. So in this case, in the stomach, the substrate will be what? Proteins, right? I said this enzyme will break down proteins, not anything else. So if you have all these substrates in your proteins, so we got uh, carbohydrates, we got lipids, and we got proteins, which one will this enzyme choose to interact with? Yes, the proteins. So it's going to go bind to the substrate, and it's going to break it down into something smaller. This thing that the protein is broken down into is called a polypeptide. So you got to remember, polypeptides, many polypeptides together make up a protein. So this enzyme called pepsin will break down this protein into its individual polypeptides. Okay? And remember, the enzyme is never affected in the process. So once the enzyme breaks it down, it can be released and work again on something else. So it's never used up. Enzymes don't get used up. They don't get, they don't change when they interact with something. They will stay the same and now be able to do it again. Um, so remember, what's the conditions? Remember, enzymes are specific, so they interact with a specific molecule, but they also need certain, certain, certain conditions. So pepsin always needs HCL to be activated. We mentioned that here. It always needs HCL to activate it, to wake it up. Um, so this point two is kind of the same thing. It needs a low pH to be activated. And HCL is acidic, so it's going to make the stomach to pH 2, really low pH. So remember, pH below 7 is acidic, and pH above 7 is uh, basic or alkaline. So this, as this HCL is released, the, uh, the pH of the stomach becomes really low, and this is what activates the pepsin to be able to wake up and work. So that's why it needs really low pH to work. Because remember, in the mouth, the pH was 7, and salivary amylase, the enzyme that breaks down the carbohydrates into maltose, actually requires pH 7, not pH 2. So remember, different enzymes require different conditions. You need to remember this. And the last thing it needs is 37 degrees Celsius. So you need to make sure you're healthy. Because if you're sick or something, um, these won't work that good. And so you'll look really sick and don't feel good, right? So temperature is also important. Now, almost finished here. So just bear with me a little bit more. Um, so we know now these proteins were broken down by pepsin into polypeptides, something that's even smaller than proteins. But they're not small enough just yet, okay? But don't worry, there's nothing more that's going to happen. Um, so right now, we can change this diagram a little bit, and we can say, okay, proteins were started to break down, but they're not finished yet. Polypeptides is not the smallest structure. We want to break down polypeptides even more later, un until their smallest form. So we started this process, we started breaking down proteins, but we're not finished yet. That's going to happen later, after the stomach. Now, one last thing. You might ask yourself, okay, I see what you're talking about, but what? wouldn't all this acid destroy your own stomach? Think about it. Wouldn't it, uh, if you release this acid, wouldn't it go and break down your membrane and eat right through your stomach? You're right. Under normal circumstances, it would. But again, our body is extremely smart, and so we pre your body actually prepared for this. So doesn't the acidity destroy our stomachs? No, it doesn't, because we have something called goblet cells. Goblet cells will secrete mucus. Mucus is like a slime, um, kind of like in your mouth. You have like a slimy thing, like saliva. It, it releases this mucus as protection, and I'll show you exactly how that looks like. So here's the goblet cell. Um, just like these glands, it is located inside the membrane. And what its job is, is to make slime. It's to make mucus. So every time, um, consistently, it's going to make... So pretend this is mucus, this green thing here. So I'm just going to show you. So it's going to secrete this mucus, just like this, on the inside of your stomach to protect your stomach wall from the acid. Let me move it up here. So I'm not going to do it all the way around because that's going to take a year, but I'm just going to do it in this little section. Oh man, sometimes. Okay, almost there. Okay, just pretend it's everywhere. Now, right now, this is what these goblet cells release. They release this mucus everywhere. So you can pretend they're also everywhere. They're not located in just one place. Okay, and they release this mucus, which means as soon as this acid is released, 
this asset will go and, and break some stuff down, but this time it's not breaking down the wall, it's breaking down the mucus. And this is okay because as soon as our mucus is destroyed, so say this acid, say this HCl goes and destroys this, this one. Oh, it destroys it. Right when it destroys it, the goblet cells will make another layer. Okay, so it will always be replaced continuously. So it will never, the, this acid will never go through and break down your stomach wall unless you have a problem, like a, like a, a disease. Then it might do that. But see, that's the purpose of goblet cells. So you can see how intelligent your body really is in making sure that nothing goes wrong. And that's it for what happens in the stomach. So next time, um, we're going we're gonna to move on from the stomach and go and see what happens to... So right now what we have is maltose, polypeptides, um, and chyme, like inside this chyme. And this will now move down to the, to the small intestine where we need to finish this process. So we, we need to finish carbohydrate digestion, we need to finish protein digestion, and we need to start and finish fats. Okay, so this is our condition right now after the stomach, and we need to change this and finish it later in digestion. So just know that the stomach does protein digestion. I hope this helped.